There's loads of reasons why cycling indoors, or you might say using a turbo trainer indoors, is such a brilliant idea. It's really time efficient and you can easily work it around your daily commitments. You can really push training on them in a way that you just can't do on the road. And best of all, it doesn't usually rain inside. So in this video, we're gonna take you through four levels of turbo training indoors, all from the most simple basic setups to some of the most advanced ones you can get. All the trainers we're going to show you today allow you to use your own bike on them and that's good for a few reasons. Firstly it keeps you in exactly the same position that you would be out on the road. It also means you're not paying for any extras when you've already got a perfectly good bike to ride. So this is the Lifeline TT1 and this is a really good example of your entry level indoor trainer setup. It gets its resistance through opposing magnets here and you can change this resistance by twisting a dial that you place on the handlebars. So even in this basic level you can still do intervals in your training session. So that basically means it's going to imitate different styles of riding so the easier one is going to be riding on a flat road and when you up the resistance it's going to be like climbing a small hill. Being the entry level magnetic resistance trainer that it is, it's not going to have a very road realistic feel when you're on it. And it's also really worth noting when you've got a trainer like this one, they are going to be quite a lot more noisy than some of the other levels that we're going to go through. So if you want to keep your mum or your partner or your neighbours happy, this might not be the best choice for you. This is what you call a wheel on trainer as well. So you keep both wheels on your bike and you change the rear axles so it fits into these two cups here and the traction of the tyre actually rubs on this roller here which actually generates the resistance. It's definitely worth noting that some of these entry level trainers will only support quick release systems here, so they won't support through axles. So definitely make sure that they are compatible with your bike before buying them. A real advantage of these trainers though is that they do fold away very small so you can tuck them away in a cupboard very easily and they don't require power either. So this sort of trainer can really help give you that pre-race warm up. Even in the entry level TT1 unit here, it does come with a riser block and this is really useful as all trainers will raise up the back wheel of your bike. So you need a riser block just to lift up that front end a little bit to make the bike level again so you're not in that drop down position. So level two of indoor training and you might be thinking this trainer looks very similar to the last one and that's because it's the same one. But you can actually add a few upgrades to these trainers that enhance your training and actually make them more fun to use. A lot of people will watch TV and listen to music whilst on a turbo, but that doesn't give you a very immersive riding experience. But now we all know we've got third party apps like Zwift, for example, that can give you a really engaging ride with you and your mates, almost as if you're out on the road. And all you need to do to get started on using this on a basic level is a speed and cadence sensor, an amp plus USB stick and a mobile tablet or laptop. So with the speed sensor attached to your rear hub and the cadence sensor attached to your cranks, Zwift and other similar apps can actually convert this data into a power output. And that relates your effort on the bike to the avatar moving quicker or slower on the screen. So if you spend a lot of time on a wheel on rear trainer like this one here, you'll notice that it does actually wear down your rear tire very quickly. At this point, we'd really recommend going for a turbo specific rear tire. These trainer specific tires are a lot more burly and aren't gonna wear out your favorite summer tires quite so quickly. They also give you better traction on the roller. And what that's gonna do, is gonna stop any slipping of the tire when you're putting the power down. So it's gonna give you a much nicer riding experience. They also run more quietly, which is a bonus. And on this topic, if you're not gonna buy a specific tire, the slicker the tire you use will run a lot quieter than any tire with any sort of tread on it. If you're getting into this level of turbo training, we definitely recommend getting some cycle specific shorts and even better, some turbo specific shorts. Turbo specific shorts are even just that lighter weight than your average outdoor one as you usually get very hot when training indoors. They also come with a decent chamois which makes sitting on a saddle for a long period of time an absolute game changer. It's here in level three where things really start to change and this is where we start talking about smart turbo trainers. So this Kinetic Rock and Roll T6500 offers quite a lot more than what we've seen in the previous trainer. And the real big change is this is actually a smart trainer. And basically what that means is when you connect this to third party apps like Zwift for example, it's actually gonna be able to change the resistance to what's on the screen in front of you. So for example, if you're coming up to a hill section, the resistance will change in the turbo automatically to give you that really realistic immersive ride. A trainer like this has also got a much bigger and heavier flywheel in it, which is gonna give you much more resistance as well. So if you're a powerful rider, it's just gonna let you train that much harder. 
So the reason this model is called the rock and roll model is because it actually has a rocking motion. So when you're putting the power down on the bike, it gives you that really realistic bike experience. It's also a really heavy unit and that's actually a really good thing for a turbo trainer because it gives you that really stable platform as well as having these really wide legs which again are just going to give you that added stability. But the bad side to this is it's going to be a really big unit to tuck away at home. So it's going to be more of a permanent feature in the garage or the shed for example. It may not be the nicest topic but when you're training this hard you're probably going to be sweating quite a lot. We'd recommend getting a sweat net and probably a floor mat as well as that's going to catch anything that gets past this. So basically having a trainer like this is just going to give you a much more accurate, immersive and enjoyable way of training. So if you're new to indoor training, one of the things that you might not have thought of is the fact that you're obviously not going to have the same airflow as riding a bike outdoors. And getting a decent fan to replicate that is actually a really key part of being comfortable training indoors. So getting a specific indoor trainer fan like this Kicker Headwind is actually a really decent idea as it gives you a really direct, powerful jet of air. This next turbo trainer from Tax, the Neo 2T, is a different style of smart trainer. And this is actually what we call a direct drive trainer. And as you can probably tell, the main difference to a trainer like this is you've got to actually take the rear wheel off your bike and mount the frame to the trainer itself. Firstly, this is a much more stable way of using a turbo trainer, as well as actually being able to get far, far more accurate data from your training. They also have a very realistic road feel, very similar to the experience that you'd have outside. Because these style of trainers run on the direct drive sort of system, they run much, much more quietly. And in most cases, the most noise you can actually hear is coming from the drivetrain. So as these trainers are so accurate in measuring your power, you can really take your training to the next level and racing with your mates online really does become almost as engaging as racing them in real life without actually having to go and meet them, as well as being able to race people from all over the globe. If you want to do any sort of sprint training, then having a direct drive trainer is going to work wonders for you because you're not going to have any sort of slippage from that rear wheel like the trainers that we've seen before. What you'll probably want to do if you've got a trainer like this is you'll want to buy a cassette that replicates the one on your bike as you won't want to have to keep on switching this from your bike to the trainer every time that you want to use it. If space is an issue for you, these direct drive trainers can be quite bulky, but these Tax Neos easily fold away into a really small package so you can tuck them away in a cupboard very easily. So to recap, the better the turbo you get will give you a more quiet training experience. It will give you a much more immersive interactive riding experience, as well as giving you much better data so you can train far more accurately. So I hope that can help you make a more informed decision when choosing a turbo trainer. If you've got any hints and tips to making indoor training that much better, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.